to speak in this debate after Nanai Mahuta, and I acknowledge that contribution, and begin uh, my, my contribution to this debate uh, in the way that others have done, in acknowledging the special role uh, played by uh, Lady Raiha Mahuta um, in, in bringing this matter to, to, to this point in the House. It's a, a proud moment. Um, I also honour the contributions of others who have been involved in that process over many years. Uh, Sir Robert, also Tukarora Rangira Morgan, um, former member of this House, and indeed um, negotiators from the government side, from both Labour and, and national governments in this matter. Um, I'm pleased to take the opportunity to make some comments on the bill and to signal that the Green Party will support its passage into law. We do this not only because supporting settlements is our default position, but also because there are some particularly positive and sensible elements uh, in the form of settlement proposed in the amended bill. The key word in the title of the bill, and that which provides a context for its provisions, is of course raupatu, confiscation. The Waikato settlement of 1995 and the Crown apology that form part of it made it clear beyond dispute that the military and legislative actions of the Crown in 1863 that cost Waikato their lives, their land, their cultural and economic base were illegal and in gross breach of Article 2 of the Treaty. A Royal Commission of Inquiry as long ago as 1926 found that the Raupatu, the confiscation of Waikato land by the Crown, had been wholly excessive and that a grave injustice had been done to Tangata Whenua. Iwi Māori have been extraordinarily patient for generations in their wait for a fair deal and equally modest in their demands and expectations in regard to compensation. And it is, it is to be hoped... <coughs> Excuse me, sir. It is, it is to be hoped that those who accuse Māori of venality, as some farmers have done uh, in the news media today, or of having a victim mentality, or of demanding special privileges, as we've heard in the House today, will one day read and understand the real history of this and other settlements, and realise how generous Māori have been and continue to be in these processes. With a few notable exceptions, the co-management model that, that is found in this bill has not been readily accepted or adopted in many places around New Zealand, and it is difficult to escape the conclusion that this is a symptom of the Crown and Crown agencies being unwilling to relinquish control over land, water and other resources. This bill represents a genuine attempt to share power over the river and its present and future management. That, sir, is commendable and we hope will be followed by a more open and accepting approach to co-management more generally. Concern has been expressed, notably by Ngāti Koroki Kaukura, um, that their exclusion from the settlement and from representation on the Waikato River Authority will compromise their interests in the river. The given reason for this exclusion from the authority, that a number larger than 10 would be unworkable is far from persuasive, although I welcome uh, Nana Mahuta's comments about this. The reassurances from the committee in respect of this iwi and indeed in respect of similar concerns voiced by others, including Ngāti Teata or Waiohua, Ngāti Tūwharetoa, Raukawa and Te, te Arawa, must be honoured, as any failure to recognise the interests and mana of these tribes would threaten the integrity and success of the whole settlement. Throughout the commentary from the Select Committee, there are reassurances that nothing in this bill can or will in any way disadvantage other river iwi who assert rights to some part of the river or of the resources within or around it. It would be appropriate for the Minister to restate these assurances in the House. It was with some alarm that we noted that the Select Committee preferred that the direction-setting document for the authority and its work designated to Turi Whaimana should not have the status of a national policy statement. But that concern was, of course, alleviated when we saw that rather than being downgraded, the intention was for the document to take precedence over any national policy statement or other RMA planning document. 
We support the establishment of a single governing body with equal representation from iwi and Crown agencies as being in the spirit of the treaty relationship and in the sense that a single entity ought to be better able to take an integrated and comprehensive strategic view of management needs and practices. The proposed clean-up trust with assured funding to support projects is a long overdue initiative. The condition of the Waikato River, as with so many of our rivers and waterways, is nothing short of a national disgrace. The sacrifice of the river water to the combined demands of farming, of urban development, of excessive extraction and discharge of waste is a trend that must be stopped and indeed reversed if we are to protect our own future well-being socially, culturally and economically and to assure future generations of a useful and usable freshwater resource. Our only concern would be that the funding put aside may not be sufficient for the task. We would also expect that the trustees take a broad view of what constitutes a project to restore the health and the Māori of the water, including, for example, provision of funds to take legal action against polluters and to disperse sums to research, develop and implement and enable changes to land use practices that over time have contributed to and will otherwise continue to contribute to the water's degradation. So the Green Party welcomes the bill back from the Select Committee and gives our undertaking to support it. Uh, Speaker. Honourable Rodney Hyde.